All right, this is Nathan Keller. We're doing trial number two. We're just working out some kinks. Uh, uh, John's trying to figure out how to, to get in. Uh, I think his wife, Samantha, this wonderful, uh, awesome Samantha, is helping him hop on. <laughs> so that's what I figured out what's going on. Um, I went and deleted the previous video. Uh, we're going to have John Jewell on here in a moment uh, once he gets connected. He is our missionary for Westworth Church of Christ. Um, that was sent out last October. He and his family, John, Samantha, Jonah, Andy, and Ben, we sent them all out uh, to Lalongwe, Malawi. And they're currently doing a lot of work in a little village outside. Well, actually, I think it's like a suburb called Tambalali. Uh, and they're doing a lot of work there with the church. Uh, we're going to talk about some exciting things here in a moment. I've sent them an invite, and we're going to see if he hops on. It's going to be very interesting indeed. Um, cross your fingers. Ooh, we're hoping it's going to happen. So, uh, just to let everybody know while they're, they're coming. One of my favorite things to do is, you can see, ping pong. I like to play ping pong. And uh, we had a ping pong tournament a couple weeks ago. And I just want to say that a friend of mine, Max Lyle, uh, he, he won that ping pong tournament. But uh, I will be practicing a lot because I feel as if, you know, I just let everybody know I've beat Max Lyle before. Now, I see you, John. I'm, I'm going to wave at you. I'm about to bring you on. I just want to tell everybody, I have beat Max Lyle before. I'm not a bad ping pong player. I will beat him again. The last time I beat him was in private. And I don't know if anyone believes me, but I have beat him. And I will beat him in public. It will happen. The day of reckoning is coming, Max. All right, so that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring on my man, uh, John Jewell. And hey, what's up, Kathy Kendall from Ministry Church of Christ? All right, so I'm going to bring him. All right, so we're bringing on my man, John Jewell, our missionary in Lalangwe, Malawi. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Did we make it? We made it. Woo, trial number two. And and we got Kathy who's on. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Good luck. She said, good luck. Yeah, technology, we need lots of luck. Even better yet, we need lots of prayer. Um, well, you know, John, you look pretty good today. Thanks. You're welcome. I don't know if that's a compliment. I'll take it for what you think it is. <laughs> that, that, that means last time we spoke, I wasn't looking very good. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. Hey, you need a Parker. Nice to see you. Uh, um, uh, wonderful to have you guys on. Uh, we got several people on watching. Uh, we got my man John Jewell from Lalong, uh, from Longwe, Malawi, and uh, we're going to be talking about a few things here today. Hey, Pat Bouchelle, um, and it's really important that we kind of keep uh, in the know with our mission work. And so, once a month, I'm going to try to get John on here to talk with us about some of the things going on on the ground there in Malawi. So, John, it is good to have you. And um, one of the great things that we were talking about, actually, before we get into that, I want to let everybody know something. Uh, Samantha, his wife, is instrumental for allowing this to happen because John was not able to figure out what's going on. And I called him and Samantha's like, oh, no, 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 this is how it works. And she was telling him how to get it going. So thank you, Samantha, for helping John with that. Yeah, let's just go. Let's go ahead and get those disclaimers out right now. She's she's the backbone. Of the entire thing, so. <laughs> I already know that. I'm just a laborer. I'm just a laborer, and I do what I'm told. You just do what you're told. That's right. As a good husband should. That's right. Um, <laughs> if you're a husband who agrees with that. You know, you can respond with an amen. If you're a wife that agrees with that, you can respond with an amen. Um, all right, yeah. so. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about something that a lot of people don't know, John, and I'm hoping that you're going to come through because you start breaking up there for a moment. Um, are you there? I want to make sure you're, you're still there. Yes, I, I can hear you great. Everything sounds clear. Okay. You were breaking up, uh, kind of sound electronic. Keep in mind, everybody, we got to be patient because he is around the other side of the world. Okay. There's, there's something a lot of people – probably don't know much about and that's what's called a TEP. Um, could you explain what that is, uh, John? 
Yeah, this is a little bit like talking about a root canal. So I'm not really excited to, to talk about it. It's it's uh, it's just a necessary document to to do business and to do really any kind of ministry and 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 exist here in the country. So uh, it's it's an acronym that stands for Temporary Employment Permit, um, and it, it has we've. We've spent a year applying for it. Um, they, I've heard horror stories. I had been horror stories over the last several months about how uh, you know, many times you'll submit all of your, your documents and you're, you'll apply and they'll lose your application. And sure enough, I be, my story became one of the horror stories because about three months ago they lost uh, the application. So we had to we had to do this a couple of times. Um, it's just a lot of bureaucracy. Uh, thank the Lord, we finally got approved last week, and we uh, we're in business. So uh, we've still got uh, just a few days before we get on a plane to come visit. So it really worked perfectly. All right. So I want to I want to go ahead and just kind of uh, let people know because you are breaking up a little bit. I want to give a little context to that. Um, basically, what John that, is that, saying that, is that he's had a little bit of trouble with this TEP. Uh, and there are actually people who really have difficulties getting the TEP with the bureaucracy and stuff with the government. Um, and he got his TEP. So this is praise God situation. Uh, could right. you tell everybody uh, what 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 happens? What do you have to do if you don't have a TEP when you're in Malawi? Yeah, so. Uh... It's just a matter of um, you have to keep going down to the immigration office. You have to – burden of proof is on you. Yeah. Are you still with me? Are you still with me, Nathan? Oh, man. Can you hear me? Okay. there. I, I can hear you now. Yeah, don't turn it. Don't turn it. <laughs> but we're, yeah, we're we're having to figure out this uh, this, this technology from you know we're halfway around the world, and I think the signal's yeah. kind of breaking up at times. Uh, okay, so sometimes when you if you don't have a TEP and you're in Malawi, uh, then you you kind of in order to stay there, what are some of the things that you have to do, John? You have to make cookies for the Lalongwe uh, Immigration Board and bring them in there. And basically just, yeah, you really do. You have to rub elbows with them and uh, make cookies with them. And it, there's a lot of politics to it. Um, <laughs> you have to pray a lot. And, and we did all of that. So, um, <laughs> again, thank the Lord it's, it's done. It's done. <laughs> but it really does amount to. Uh, no more rubbing elbows. Yeah, yeah. You no longer have to be nice to anyone. Trust. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, um, there in uh, Malawi, uh, I, I believe there is a uh, uh, basically a, a suburb there of Lalongwe uh, that you guys have kind of become really attached to through uh, one of the guys who works there at the mission by the name of Snowden. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's in uh, the, the little village is called Tambalali, um, and you started kind of a feeding program for those people. Why do they need a feeding program, John? Yeah, um, well, there's, you know, going back to uh, plans to work with an orphanage, um, the government here is is uh, cracking down on orphanages they're really they're really discouraging orphanages from starting up and those that are existing they're trying to actually close them down and reunite kids with some sort of family family member um so mm -hmm. this is not a good time to try to establish an orphanage so we just tried to think out of the box a little bit yeah. um there are plenty of orphans in the villages um there are uh, literally hundreds of them uh, uh, in, in any given village. So we just found our way into this village through Snowden. He invited us in. Uh, we got to know his family and, and some extended family and um, some of his friends. And, um, and with that group of people uh, came a lot of orphans. So we said, well, look, the orphans mm. are coming to us. Let's, uh, let's consider trying to feed them and take care of them. And uh, so we started this program I guess it's been um, I guess it's been about two months now, and um, every day uh, we 
we're providing them a meal. Uh, before Half of them uh, are too young to go to school. The other half are trying to go to a public school nearby, and uh, we try to get them a meal before they go to school. The, the little ones we've started feeding, and we've established a preschool for them to, to go to. So uh, it's been a, a huge success. The way that we're managing uh, is by allowing the widows, that many of whom have their own children that don't have fives, um, they're the ones that are doing the cooking and the cleanup. So it, um, it, just, it just seems to be working well. So that, basically, there's there's a there's a need for from widows and orphans there who don't have uh, basically what we have in the United States or what many people there and even Tambalali or in the long way have uh, is a lot of really uh, nutritious meals. And you guys are providing a nutritious meal for them once a day. At, uh, um, these orphans before they go to public school and some of them who don't even go to school yet. You're providing that for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't get that, right? Yeah, we had to cap it at, at 30. There are more than 30. We've had several come, and unfortunately, we don't have the resources to, to be able to feed more than that right now. Uh, the plan would be to to mm -hmm. establish more resources and, and help more people. But right now, it's, it's right about 30 people, uh, 30 kids, and um, they get a meal every day. It's not just a once-a-week kind of feeding program. It's a it's an everyday program. It's around That's the clock, awesome. you know, seven days a week. So, um, you know, many times they have to skip entire days uh, without eating. But as long as this program's going, they won't have to do that anymore. And, you know, it's hard to – man, I like to eat, you know. And, and I, can't, I can't learn anything <laughs> if I haven't eaten, you know. So I can't imagine a oh, little guy man. or girl trying to go to school and, and learn something if they've got an empty stomach, especially if they're, you know, they're, they've gone a couple of days without eating. So uh, we're really just, we're thrilled about this. We feel, we feel really honored and, 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 and privileged really to be able to do this. And part of our, part of our coming back and uh, doing some fundraising is going to be to, to help, you know, those other kids that are still, they're kind of knocking on the door waiting to get in. So uh, yeah. I think we're going to, I want to tell you something, John. Uh, I want to tell you something. My son, I was having a discussion with him. You'll you'll appreciate this. I was having this discussion with him this morning. Uh, he, uh, I asked Lillian, "You want me to cook you a, a breakfast burrito?" And she's like, "Yeah." And so I cook her breakfast burrito. She goes and asks her brother. He's like, "No, nah, I'm good." And I'm like, "You don't want anything to eat? You want cereal, something, oatmeal? You know, you got oatmeal in there that you wanted." He said, "No, I'm just not hungry." And I said. What do you mean you're not hungry? He said, well, I just, I've eaten too much, Dad. And, and when I get to school, they have a snack time at 8.30 a.m. And then we eat at 11 a.m. And I'm sitting there going, my goodness gracious, they feed you so much food. I mean, here in the United States, our kids, when they go to school, not only do most schools, most people feed their children before they go to school, all schools, especially in the public school uh, uh, in the United States, provide meals for everybody, even kids who don't have food. And, and if yeah. they come from a low-income school, they're ensured that when they get there, the breakfast is provided, and they have a snack time. And if they don't have their own snacks, then the school will provide them snacks so their brains have all the nutrition they have to learn. And so yeah. I love this, this fact that here we are. We have this, this, this missionary, uh, this missionary family in Lalongwe who's essentially going over to Lalongwe, going to this village in Tambalali, working with these orphans and these widows, making sure that these people – have food and that these kids who are students have food so that they when they go to school man they their brains are working they're firing and they're not having to worry about the fact that their stomachs are empty uh you know what i mean and so i, I love I, I think that's great that you guys are doing that uh and another thing i wanted to bring up was you know um you guys got a a pretty good um by the way i want to say hi to a few people natalie Ben Bandini, what's up, Natalie? Brenda, Burke Campbell, Amy Watson. We got some other people. Good to have everybody. Uh, this is John Jewell, a good friend of mine. Uh, and he's also, uh, the mission has received something from California. Um, yeah. That's right. Uh, we had somebody from Ali J. Jefferson said, we don't truly understand until we have experienced it firsthand. I think you're exactly right, especially in the United States. It, it seems as if when we uh, um, 
grow up with the conditions we have, we take for granted the food we have, the Cheetos in the pantry. Uh, we take for granted just oil or oatmeal or rice or eggs. Uh, and yeah, absolutely. May God bless it. I mean, the fact that we get provided these things and it's nice to be able to provide other people in other countries like John and Samantha and their family are doing. But I, I also want to say that the California has done something great, John. What is that? Not the state, but there's a, there's a group in California. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, I've actually, this is a girl that's from Texas, uh, Michelle, um, and she's a, um, she's a, 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 a childhood friend of some she's known her all of her life, um, but she has just taken a, a huge interest in our mission and um, has rallied to start raising, um, as, as much as raising people to get books. So she is loading up a trailer of books, and she is going to single-handedly drive them from, te from California to Texas uh, and drop them off so that we can ship those books over here and have a library for the school that we intend to build for the orphans. Okay, so I, I, I want to give some context to that because I think you're broke up, and I want to make sure people understand that. What John is saying sure. is there's a girl uh, who's uh, lives in Texas, and um, I guess she's from California originally, is that right, John? She's from Texas. She's, she lives in California now. Oh, she lives in California now, and she yeah. she drove from California down to Texas with she's books, going bringing to books drive. down. She's when going we're to. Gonna be in, yeah, we're going to be in Texas in October. She's going to drive from California to Texas with those books for us to, to distribute here to start a library. So they're going to start. You're going to start a library there. Correct. Okay, and then there's books. All right, so that's great. So what we have is people, man, I'm telling you, it takes a, a group of people to do missionary work, and it takes people who are there on the ground, like John and his family, but it also takes other people. It takes other people like our church, Westward Church of Christ, but it takes other people. It takes people like, uh, uh, what, what was her name, John? Rachel. Rachel. What was her name? Michelle, Michelle, yeah, right. who's do, who's bringing books. I mean, everybody's got a part to play. It's like the body of Christ, all these people connected, working together. And this church is expanding beyond just the United States into another into another country. And, and um, I, I think that's great, John. Uh, usually I don't talk this much, but I, I, I think it's uh, you're breaking up to me. And I know some of the context. So I, I want to just make sure everybody's hearing that. Because if you're breaking yeah. up to me, you're probably breaking up to other people. Sure. Um, he's a lot better to talk than I am, trust me. <laughs> <Not true. laughs> um, uh, okay, so let us know. Oh, uh, Ali Jefferson asked, uh, what part of California is she in? And there's probably some privacy, but what, what part of California? Yeah, I honestly, she just moved there uh, within See, I, I didn't catch any of that. <laughs> but uh, uh, maybe one of those things where you'll you'll have to uh, message Allie uh, or something later. Yeah. Sorry, Allie. Uh, that's a good question. It, and we love it when people ask questions. But, um, you know, sometimes we have a hard close, time. Um, close to I think it's awesome yeah. that the tech. Go ahead. Close to San Bernardino. I heard it that time. Yeah. Close to San Bernardino. Yeah. Okay. What up, Josh? Hey, I want to say hi to my man, Josh McElroy. Uh, he's a friend who uh, I graduated with. Uh, man, I, I love Josh. Josh was a cool guy, John. He's, a, he's one of those kids whose dad was a preacher for a while also, and then his dad came and started doing, like, electrical work there for his school, and he and I used to hang out. We used to do all kinds of crazy things. And I'll say – John, Josh also taught me how to keep my ankles strong. That sounds like a weird thing to say, but you got to stay strong in your body. He used to do a lot of training in the military and stuff for people. So, anyways, uh, good to have you, Josh. Um, John, would you let us know when is your furlough? Um, 
we get on the plane October 3rd, and uh, we will be in Washington, D.C. Uh, on the 5th. We'll be in DFW on the 9th of October. All right. So um, let me look here. So I'm looking at a calendar. October the 5th, and you will be in DFW on October the 9th? Correct. Right there. All right. There we go. And that 9 looked backwards because it was not backwards. It's just the, the, the electronics here, flipping everything around. All right. So October the 9th. John, I can't wait to have you. Um, uh, I love the fact that we got our first question a moment ago in doing these. Man, if you guys have questions whenever I'm doing these, please ask them. They're great. John, is there anything else that you want to tell us or let us know about the mission or anything else? Well, I'm not supposed to talk about the, the land possibility, but we have, uh, we have that in the works. And, uh, you know, we've got our eyes on a piece of land. And um, our intention, whether it's this piece or a different one, is to, you know, is to, is to establish a school and establish a clinic and to establish a library and really develop, you know, develop this village that we believe God has opened the doors for us to walk into. Um, believe it or not, this is not this is not a commonplace thing for um, a foreigner like me to come in and be able to have access to a village within the first year. It's it's very uncommon, and I never mm. see any I never see any white white people or Chinese people or anybody from another country. Uh, in the villages when I go out there. Um, we're mm. some of the only ones, and some of these people have never seen a white person before. So, um, you know, over the months, I've, I've just realized, well, we really, God really has done a work here just to allow us to get in uh, and establish trust so quickly with these people. And um, we believe it's for a, a specific purpose, and we're not going to waste any time. Uh, as, as the resources come in, we're going to use them to help these people. Sure. Well, and I, I tell you, uh, here's the neat thing. Uh, so much help and aid has been sent to Malawi, specifically, traditionally. And the way that aid looks is green. It is greenbacks. It is money. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever you throw money alone at a situation, you never fix any problems. All you it do doesn't help. is prolong them. That's right. You just sure. kick the can down the road. And we don't want to kick the can down the road. That's what people need to understand is, is we sent you guys, and you guys had the heart to go, uh, not to kick the can down the road, but to actually do things that can, can change the paradigm, shift the paradigm that is there in Malawi, which is this, this idea of, of, of just taking handouts. We don't want to do that. What we're doing is no. we're sending you guys to go and – uh, establish some kind of a permanent changing thing that changes the the culture and the society that that has been affected by throwing money at it and so uh yeah education sure money's involved uh maybe medical needs um education with uh not only uh math and english or uh chichewa but also education in uh, agriculture. Um, and then, of course, not the least, but the most, Jesus spreading the gospel. Yeah. And so all these things uh, are, are things that you guys are seeking to want to do. And that's one of the reasons you guys are wanting the land is to be able to uh, expand that idea, uh, to, to continue to expand that that uh, uh that calling and that dream so i think that's a great thing and i i think god is there and i think the spirit's working and i think uh we'll continue praying for the spirit to work on people uh and that's right ali ali said becoming self-sufficient is the key and that's exactly right uh whenever the apostles would go start missions uh in uh after christ had left um, one of the th key things is they did not usually just stay there. Like Paul, he would go, and then he would leave after time, and then he'd come back. But the idea was they had to have some self-sufficiency, and we certainly want people to be self-sufficient, not just be given something and expect to be given something all the time. That's exactly right. And, and yeah. John, does that not create a good sense of self-pride, like good, healthy pride? Yeah, I mean, everybody um, wants to maintain dignity. You know, uh, we all uh, have something, I think, that is innate in us to mm -hmm. not just be a charity case perpetually. Um, mm -hmm. 
but in many cases, you know, you, knowing when somebody is in crisis versus knowing when somebody just wants a handout is, is tough to discern. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what we've been praying for is the wisdom to recognize that, you know, those who are in crisis who need help uh, versus those who, who just need a hand up, not a handout. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, yeah. that's what we, you know, we live in that tension constantly here. Sure. Um, but, but there's, I mean, there was a widow last week, um, you know, her husband was killed. Uh, we go over to her house. She doesn't have a roof on her house. She's got three small kids living in this house with no roof. Oh and, my goodness. You know, for, for, for $25, I can put a roof on that thing. So, mm. uh, you know, it, it's, you got to have boots on the ground. You throw a bunch of money to a government that, uh, has no accountability. That money's not going to make it to the people. And that's exactly no. what's happening. So, no. um, somebody's going to have to get their hands dirty. And, and fortunately the Lord's pressed it on our hearts to, to be those people. So we're ready for that task. And ho I'm just asking for the ability to be able to convey an accurate description of what's going on over here. Absolutely. Well, and, and when you talk about uh, governments or large organizations, many of those things, if they have money that, that, that does make it to what they said it was going to go to, it's usually a mm -hmm. fraction. The, the nice thing about this is, is whenever you, people give money to, the Malawi mission there at Westward Church of Christ's website. Uh, and it goes to the account, which goes to you guys from the church to you guys. And it's currently, it's always every month there's, there's money being given. Uh, and so it's being given to John and Samantha and some of that money, you know, they, they've got planned out for certain things. And some of that money is designed to be for situations that just come up. And so uh, it's, right. it's really great to see. Um, I, there was a story you told uh, uh, um, about a gentleman, I think, uh, who who was was had to go to the hospital. Also, that you had to take the hospital, and he had like uh, uh, was it leprosy or something. I, I... Well, he, I just, I actually was at the hospital this morning with I think the same guy, and uh, mm. you know, we we have bounced from hospital to hospital looking for some help for this guy. He has had an abrasion on his foot, and an abrasion really doesn't do it justice. It is a lesion that has been uh, opened and exposed, and it's getting deeper, and it's constantly mm. infected, and uh, you know, extremely painful. He's got AIDS. He's he's HIV positive. But he's, here's the thing, Nathan. He's had it for 18 years. That lesion? Yes. It's been on his oh leg for 18, 18 years. And I still can't believe Every time I hear him tell, the, you know, whenever we go to a new hospital, he tells, you know, who, the doctor or whoever the problem. And he, 18 years. You know, I asked his wife, has it really been 18 years? Yes, 18 years. He's got two small kids. And they haven't been able to find any help for him. You know, I was admitted to the hospital here uh, eight months ago with a kidney stone, and yeah, I, I got the best. I, I got the best care that's available in Malawi. We went to the we went to the best doctor. We had the we had first world, uh, you know, uh, paradigms thinking how to to treat me and what was what was going to be best to save my life. Uh, I took him to that doctor, and for three hundred bucks we've been able to get him down to a clinic that's going to do a skin graft for him. They're going to do the surgery. They're going to, they're going to fix this thing. And his, I told him this morning, I, we don't, I don't speak to Chewa very well. He doesn't speak English. He can't hear very well. I told him it, the time has come. Jesus is going to heal him. And it's 18 years is a long time to have mm. to deal with something like that. And we're going to take care of it. 300 bucks. That's but you awesome. Know what? Best three hundred, best three hundred dollars I've ever spent in my life, and I, and I just have to tell you that. Amen. So, amen. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm disclosing too much here. I don't, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to. But I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I'm sitting there watching this happen, and mm -hmm. I just thought, I, there's 17 million people here. Are we going to save them all? Probably mm -hmm. not. Mm -mm. But yeah. man, I'm going to save the one that's in front of me. Yeah, sure. And I'm going to sure. help them as much as I can. So, absolutely. Man, I'm I'm so happy during that whole thing you were just talking. You didn't go out once. It's almost as if the spirit meant for it to happen. <laughs> <I hope. laughs> well, it's it's great to have you, John, and and I look forward to seeing you in person. Um, uh, I, I'm, Me too. I can't wait to put my arms around you and your family. I uh, miss you guys, and I know everybody else here at church does. Um, and I hope that everyone will look forward to. Uh, 
future uh, conversations between my men, John and I, and other people who will be here. Um, in the past, we've had Sean Tyler, and who looks forward to talking to you. I know, John, he told me that. And then uh, we've also had my man Clay Johnson. I've got other people in the works that I'm, that I'm working on getting, starting hopefully an announcement yeah. next Monday. So, But, John, yeah. it's good to see you. We love you. Everybody, good to have you guys. Bye-bye, John. God bless. Nathan, thank you. You too. Thank you.